Good afternoon, ladies, and thank you for joining us in Far Above Rubies today. Today is part two, essentially, to yesterday's devotional. This is the flip side of the coin, two women influencing kings, one for better, one for worse. Yesterday we talked about Esther, and today we're going to talk about Herod and Herodias. Um, forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. That's how I say it. Your reading challenge is going to be Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 through 12, and also 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, specifically verse 7, okay? Um, in this story, we find that Herod has heard of John the Baptist, of his fame, and he has some interaction with Herod, um, John the Baptist, and John the Baptist tells Herod that it is not okay for him to take his brother's wife, I'm assuming his dead brother's wife, I'm not really sure. Either way, this creates some tension and some malice between Herod, John the Baptist, and Herodias. And Herodias says that she wants John the Baptist uh, bound in prison, and so he does this for her because he's angry. It says that he even would have put him to death, but he feared the crowds, the multitudes, because they thought John a prophet, which he was. Now, it goes on to say that Herodias prompts her daughter to dance for Herod, and he loves to dance so much on his birthday that he says he will give her anything that she requests. And she has, Herodias has manipulated the situation to her benefit and claims she wants John the Baptist's head on a plate, basically, okay? Now, this is a different kind of influence than what we looked at with Queen Esther. This kind of influence is selfish, it's malicious. She uses manipulation as influence. She's not seeking anything good, anything beneficial, anything um, holy or, or pure or right. She is seeking purely to um, soothe her own anger, her own selfishness in this situation. She rejected the word of God from the man of God and uses this to influence the king in the worst way. How many, let me ask you this question, how many wives live for the Lord without their husbands? I think, I bet you can think of quite a few. I know quite a few. Let me ask you this question. How many husbands live for the Lord without their wives living for the Lord? I bet you can think of very few, if any. This is because we have tremendous influence on our husbands, ladies. The scripture I put you in in 1 Corinthians <clears throat> says that man is the glory of God and woman is the glory of man. We can be our husband's crowning glory or we can be the shackles and chains, the ball and chain that brings him down. We were built to be our husband's helpmates. We were built to aid him, to serve him in the best of ways. I don't mean to be a servant to him, but to serve him, even as we serve one another in Christ. How long do you think it takes a husband whose helpmate is tugging him in the wrong direction to turn and go that direction with her? <clears throat> we have tremendous influence over our husbands, ladies. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm sorry. We have tremendous influence with our husbands, and we have to use that influence wisely. We talked about yesterday ways that we can influence our husband for the better, positively. But there are many ways in which we can influence him negatively, and this is a prime example. We know how to manipulate. We know how to back our husbands into a corner. We know how to get them to say just the right things that will allow them to walk down the wrong paths if that's where our hearts are. You can negatively influence your husband by saying, I don't feel like going to church today. Let's just stay home. You can negatively influence your husband by saying, you know that man of God today? I don't think he had it right. I, don't, I didn't like him. I didn't like his suit. I don't like his wife. You can plant such negativity in your husband's mind that you can drag him down your wrong path with you. We need to be prayed up. We need to be in the word. We need to have a right spirit and we need to exert our influence with our husbands for the better, for the positive, for a blessing to him and a blessing for us. We need to be 
his crown and glory. We need to be a glory to our husbands. We need to influence him in every good way that we can and make sure that we are never being manipulative, that we are never being malicious or selfish in our influence. Go read Matthew chapter 14 verses 1 through 12 and peek in at 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 7. Think about a way that you can be your husband's crown and glory. If no one's told you lately you are loved, you are cherished, you are valuable, you have worth, tremendous worth, and that worth is far above rupees. I love you all. Today, thank you for being here, and I'll see you all tomorrow. God bless you.